we're faced with similar sorts of problems doing acid and base comparisons here. And once again, it's important to remember the factors in the form of dyslexic Chris for deciding between the acidity of different groups. So question A asks us about the acidity of hydrogens bonded to carbon in three different molecules. I'm actually going to draw these out a little bit more explicitly to start to think about this. So the first has hydrogen bonded to a double bond. The second includes hydrogen bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon. And the third includes hydrogen bonded to an sp hybridized carbon. I've already kind of given away where we're going with this, but let's just make sure that no other factors are relevant here other than the hybridization of the carbon to which the hydrogen is bonded. So charge and electronegativity, obviously a non-issue since carbon is the atom bonded to hydrogen in all cases. Resonance is also a non-issue and you should convince yourself by drawing the conjugate bases of these three acids that none of those conjugate bases have important alternative resonance forms. Inductive effects are for the most part irrelevant um, because although there are very small inductive differences associated with an sp2 versus an sp3 versus an sp hybridized carbon, these aren't strong enough to explain the differences in acidity that we actually observe. And a similar idea applies to steric effects, though we could argue that the steric environment of an sp hybridized CH bond is a little more open than the environment of, say, an sp3 hybridized CH bond, which includes two other hydrogens around it, this difference in steric environment really isn't enough to explain the observed differences in acidity that we see. So the main factor that's left here is the hybridization, and we're left to explain how hybridization dictates the difference in acidity. Well, remember that a lone pair in an sp3 hybrid orbital is less stable than a lone pair in an sp2 hybridized orbital, which is less stable than a lone pair in an sp hybridized orbital. The sp hybridized lone pair is the most stable, while the sp3 hybridized lone pair is the least stable. And the reasons for this have to do with the percent p character of the hybrids and the fact that p orbitals are higher in energy and less stable than s atomic orbitals. Using this idea then, the lone pair that would result from loss of the proton in the alkyne, something like this, would be the most stable. And that means that this structure on the right, the alkyne, must be the most acidic of the three. Because its conjugate base is the most stable. Put another way, the conjugate base is the weakest for the alkyne. And so its conjugate acid, which is the alkyne itself, bearing the terminal CH bond, is the most acidic. Coming in the middle is the compound with the sp2 hybridized carbon-hydrogen bond, or the alkene. The stability of the alkene alone pair is intermediate between that of an sp and an sp3 hybridized lone pair. So that comes in the middle. And the least acidic is the alkane CH bond. And that's because the lone pair that would result if we drew the proton leaving and the conjugate base at that carbon would be the least stable lone pair. To put it in terms of conjugate acid and conjugate base strength, the conjugate base would be the most reactive, the strongest. And so the conjugate acid is the weakest acid, and the alkane is the least acidic of the three. What about case B? Well, in case B, the major factor here is a difference in the atom type bearing the negative charge. So now we're asking about basicity, but what we should notice is that the atoms that are bearing the lone pairs, and it may be helpful to actually draw these out just to show this, the atoms bearing the lone pairs are different in all three cases. We've got a carbon in case three, we've got a nitrogen in case two, and we've got an oxygen in case one. And so the major factor here, again starting at the top of the list, is just the electronegativity difference between the atoms bearing the negative charge. And hopefully intuitive ideas from general chemistry are coming into your brain now, that a more electronegative atom holds on to its lone pairs more tightly and is less basic as a result. In fact, of the three, the methoxy anion is the least basic. On the other hand, an atom that's less electronegative, like carbon, is more likely to give up its lone pair, and thus this is the most basic. And nitrogen, which is intermediate in electronegativity between carbon and oxygen, comes in in the middle.